It's my pleasure this morning to welcome our presenter that has come all the way from Jacksonville, Florida to share with us this morning. This is Alicia Redmond Ransom over here. And along with her, a friend from Atlanta, this is uh, Chianti. Right? And talk about God moving in mysterious ways. Um, Alicia and Vera met while working a flight for Delta. And um, Alicia is recently retired from Delta and devoting more time to her ministry and therefore available to come and visit us, which I'm really grateful for. And you'll hear more about that, the background story, I'm sure, as the morning unfolds. But welcome. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is truly my honor and, and pleasure to be here. I couldn't be just more grateful to be in a group of such a, a precious people. I feel God's love, and I feel love in this place. Um, as Timothy stated, Vera and I met uh, on actually my very last flight mm -hmm. with Delta. Mm -hmm. And and the Lord actually showed me that once Delta ends, ministry, you know, full-time ministry would begin. And so it was kind of, you know, just divine, I believe. Um, we we flew together, and I think we were, we were drawn, you know, our spirits were drawn to one another, and we connected, and we... We talked, and and God moved in a very profound way. Um, and I would I would like Vera to come and share that at this time because it it has to do with some of the things that I want to talk about today. I talk about like I, I feel guilt to my mother, and it felt like a spear in my heart. Mm -hmm. Immediately, the second she just make a movement, and, like, and I could feel. She pulled it out. I really could feel it. Thanks God I was sitting on the chair. <laughs> yeah, so. And then she prayed for me on my elbows. It was like tremendous shifting, changes. And she was talking like clear one, something, some things that I even didn't talk to her about. She told me exactly right words. That on a deep level I was expecting to hear. It was a miracle. I really want her to come and share that because I want to talk about wounds of the soul today. And, you know, the Bible says that, you know, the love that I would, that you above all, above all things, uh, prosper, you know, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So, you know, to prosper means to grow, uh, to grow strong and healthy. And so, above all things, really, God wants our soul to grow strong and healthy. And so, really, that means at some point, it's a little weakened. <laughs> you know, it's not so, quite so strong and healthy. Um, and, and I believe that that is due to wounds of our soul. And wounds that we acquire can be created in, in, in two ways, mainly, I believe, uh, through the words. That, that are spoken over us, that people speak to us, that um, you know we speak about ourselves and also our experiences. But I really want to want to focus on words today because I think that that <laughs> it really connects to Vera's experience. Um, Proverbs eighteen twenty one says that words kill, words give life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. And so oftentimes in the Bible, words are depicted as sharp objects. And so like she said, she felt it was like a spear. Psalm 64, 2, 3 says, don't let them find me, the conspirators out to get me, using their tongues as weapons, flinging poison words, poison-tipped arrow words. So there we connect, you know, words that can feel like daggers or spears. I mean, I've, I know I've personally felt that with people, you know, that were supposed to love me. <laughs> you know, that I entrusted my heart to. I also want to talk about wounds, the way they, they you know, they, man they can manifest as, as these sharp stab wounds. 
They can feel like heavy weights on us, um, especially in the, in the neck and back and shoulder area, if you're uh, burdened by something. One scripture says, how long will you vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? So it's heavy objects that break things in pieces. So those words that we've experienced from our parents, from our friends, from our siblings, from you know some people that we may work with, whatever, those things can st can stay with us, and they create these wounds until we are seek healing. You know, until we are healed, they're they're with us. We may think that we're healed from them, but until we address exactly where that thing came from. We can't, we're not healed from it. And I want to um, also talk about the mind because the mind holds what can be called strongholds. And a stronghold is a faulty thinking pattern based on lies and deception. So usually when we uh, encounter or have these soul wounds, they're from, they're from people who, who are w walking out their own lies and they project them out on us. Or they're walking out their own hurt and they project them out on us. And so it's nothing that we have done. A lot of, we don't deserve a lot of the treatment, you know, that we have received over the course of our lives. But it happens. It happens. But there is healing. God wants us to be healed. He wants us to be whole. He wants us, our soul to prosper, you know, as we, as we prosper, as we continue to prosper. Um, signs that we, can, that we can recognize, you know, that we, are, that we have been wounded or that we are wounded. Um, when things happen to us or when someone says something that, that touches that little nerve in us, uh, and we and we carry a strong feeling against it, you know, a strong feeling of anger or bitterness, or um, and sometimes we don't even know why they said somebody, you know, a friend of yours could have said, "Hey, come on out with me and take a walk with me today, hike up the mountain," and you're like, "Oh," and they're like, "Oh, get your lazy butt up and come on," <laughs> you know, but they say lazy, and maybe that's a trigger for you because. Maybe your father used to call you lazy, or used to, uh, you know, and, and talk about, you know, call you good for nothing, or, you know, we just experienced those words. And so that thing triggered that, that memory in you, that wound is still there, and they just stepped on it, and now it's hurting, and you don't want to talk to that person anymore. And you're angry and upset with that person, and sometimes and you can't even know, you don't even know why you're that mad. <laughs> but it's that wound that's there. You know, I can, I, 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 have, to sh I have to share my own story with my own anger. Um, my, I just got married about a year and a half ago, my second marriage after eight years. And, uh, and I'm not an argumentative kind of person. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a peacemaker <laughs> as far as, you know, I try to be a peacemaker. But, uh, my, my husband was arguing and he started stepping on something. I didn't know what it was. And, and I started, I mean, it was like, I hate you. And I was like, where did that just come from? Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't carry hate and I don't hate people like that and I don't hate him. So why would I say something like that? But out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks. You can learn a lot about people by what they say. And so I said, God, I don't want, I don't want to be like this. I don't want this. So you have to show me what this is, where this came from. I don't even know where it came from. And that was probably like a Monday. On a Tuesday, I had a dream. I, I dream a lot. And God gives me, he speaks to me through dreams. I had a dream that a, someone said, they were praying for me and they said, oh, call for her, her mother, her mother and father. Oh, her mother's gone. My mother was, was killed when I was two and a half. And, and I knew then, I said, oh, this has to do with my mother. 
And so about that on a Friday, I went to a service and someone was speaking to me about, you know, we were in a, it was a prophetic presbytery. And so, you know, the spirit of God was moving and they were uh, prophesying and speaking things that I hadn't talked to them about. But he said, um, he said something happened when you were about three years old, when I was two and a half, uh, and your identity was stolen. And I always felt like, like, an, like a, kind of like an orphan. And I was, you know, I always desired, now my, my father remarried when I was about four, and I desired like this mother figure. But you know, my mother was, was, was fine. She's the only mother I've ever known and I love her. But I always felt this void. And, and I said, okay. And he said, but God is gonna deal with it very quickly. I said, oh, and because that's what I've been praying for. Like God, I don't, whatever, the, whatever this anger came from, I don't want it. I went to see a movie on Sunday. I don't know if any of you saw Eddie Murphy's words. It was called, what was it called, words? Um, it was something like every word he spoke, a leaf fell off the tree. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> I don't remember. The name. Yeah. It was, you know. And so, so all through through the movie, you think that his father left him because he was so angry. And anytime his mother mentioned his father, he, you know, he didn't want to hear it. And he was angry. And I, and I was like, mm, you know. And then you find out that his father died. And I sat there like, this is me. <laughs> this, is my, this is my story. And I was bawling in the theater. And then once it was over, I had to run out. When I got in the car, I said, God, I didn't know I was carrying. I didn't know I was carrying this. You know, for, you know I forgive you. Or forgive me. I forgive her. You know, I think I, you know, I, probably, if I blamed her for dying, for leaving me, for feeling this, you know, having, feeling abandoned you know, rejected, um, just, I mean, everything I could think of. <laughs> I, I asked for forgiveness, and I forgave God, I forgave her, and then I let out this, these two yells, just screams, mm -hmm. and I could feel it from the very depths of my soul, my belly, my inner, inner man, that something was being released. And that was like a Sunday. Tuesday, my husband said, and I didn't tell him what happened. He said, something's different in you. <laughs> and I said, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> and so I told him what happened. And, he, and, and, and I tell you, I felt, I had never felt love for people afterward. The way, I mean, you know, I got, I, I didn't grow up in church. Um, I, I gave my life to him in 95, and of course I didn't get serious until about 99, and then I was on my journey, you know? And so, but I didn't, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I had this love for everybody, and I had this wonderful experience, but I didn't really have that, but God began to deal with me and my issues even, at, even after that time. But I, it, it was like I just, I wanted to go hug everybody. It was like, you know, this anger, this thing in me, whatever it was, it was gone, and I just love everybody now. You know, I could just, you know, my, you're my sister, you're my brother, you're my love. You know, I was just, I mean, I remember being in uh, Starbucks on the phone with a friend of mine, and I, and I was telling her, and it was like, everybody I saw was just like, you know, this my, you know, you're my brother, you I love everybody, you know. But my, uh, my husband was just like, okay, <laughs> you know, this was, deep for you <laughs> but um, you know I just I want to minister and dance um, I do minister and dance and uh, and kind of dramatization uh, kind of interpretive dance and um, I just you know if you have anything um, I, you know I gave it to God and I mean he you don't have to go anywhere God can heal you and touch you right where you are. You know, he, yes, he uses people, but nobody was in that car with me except for the Holy Spirit who did the work. So I just want to encourage you, um, if, if, you, if you have anything at this time that you believe that you're holding anger or bitterness or a feeling of rejection or um, just just a anything 
that you don't want to carry anymore. You don't have, I'm here to let you know you don't have to carry it anymore. God is here to heal you. So I want to, um, to um, I want to go ahead and um, begin the ministry. And um, well, one second, to me. if you would, if you would hone in on, on whatever that issue is, if you would add, ask God to forgive you, for, forgive, for you to, you forgive the offender, whether it's your parents, whether it's your brother, your sister, uh, whoever it is, just allow forgiveness to come into your heart.
one of you. He is concerned about you. He cares for you. The Bible says to cast your cares on him because he cares for you. Thank you so much. And I love you. God loves you. And just be blessed. Be blessed. Uh, thank you for a remarkable sharing with us. And I think what, uh, what is evident to me what really touched my heart is that through your own experience of healing, you essentially got a commission to heal. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pathway that has been opened up for you to be brave enough to ask for your own healing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really, I appreciated what Fran was saying about compassionate care. Well, you can give or you can receive, right? Mm -hmm. Either one. There are two things there. But, you know, it's really the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we receive through the giving. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just wondering, you know, we can open it up for just reflections on the morning. Um, from up here, I just, you know, and, and within myself, there's a resistance in me yes. to open to yes. that deep, yes. deep healing. Yes. Yes. And yet, I see the evidence yes. of what happens when we do that. 
and can we permit each other to go through that process and to reveal something new? So, yeah. and Timothy, to your point, it's very hard to open up to allow God to come in. You know, to 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 face because you're you're looking in the mirror and you're looking at the past and you're looking at things that have happened to you that you don't want to see anymore. Those things are buried. That anger was so buried in me because we didn't talk about my mother. There were no pictures of her anywhere. Never, she was never brought up. I didn't really want to talk to her, uh, talk about her to my father because I didn't want my father. I know that he can, he might feel a certain way, you know, and get kind of sad. And so, you know, it was buried, and it was very deep. And and I think that's why it came up so strongly <laughs> because it was buried so deep. But those wounds, um, once we, once we come to the end of ourselves. Like, uh, I mean, I was really like, I don't, I don't want to be like this guy. I don't want this anger in me like this. This is not you, you know. And because and, I had gotten angry before, <laughs> but I hadn't, but I, I think at that moment, it, you know, it was, it, was, it was just time and it was a turning point for me to say, um, there's something wrong here. <laughs> there's some, this isn't normal, you know. I mean, what's normal? But but this this type of anger and, and me to say I hate somebody that's not that's not you and I want all of you and none of me you know I, I want I want all you in me <laughs> I want the Holy Spirit to be in me and, and love and joy I want all of that because that's what you came for and that's my inheritance that I, that's what I have a right to but it can be like you said I mean it can be it can be really <coughs> difficult but when we I believe that when we ask God to show us those areas and to help us see see and what I've learned is God knows when you're serious so you can you can ask for help and you and, and you plan with him <laughs> and he's not gonna he's not gonna help you yet because he's like well, you're, you're, you're still playing you're not ready but when I was really like when you come when you come to the end of yourself you know like the I don't know if y'all know the story of the prodigal son you know, he came to the end of himself, and then he was like, let me go back home, because <laughs> this out here isn't worth it. Uh, he came, the Bible says that he came to the end of himself, and then he turned his heart back to the Father. And so, back to his Father, and back to the Father. So, you know, just, if you ask God for help in, in that area, he will help you. He really will help you. I must say, I've never thought I would be at Spirit Keepers and see a faith healing. I, I must say that out loud. And I too want to say thank you for being here, because well, I th for me, what I hear you saying is come to the end of your ropes and let go. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it, for some, it's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. For some, it's God the Father. For some, it's Buddha. For some, it's themselves just needing to get to that place and, and let go of what holds us in a limitation. Mm -hmm. And you brought it in a beautiful, loving you mm -hmm. that just shines. And um, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful reminder of we are all queens, whether we like the word as a male or not, we're all queens. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> Be that, shine I think that. the subtitle is royalty. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just thinking to um, wash yourself of yourself, like melting snow, which we have a lot of, I've noticed. Um, and it, the pieces, the vibrations, since I've become a parent to this, that I realize there's really nothing to forgive. Um, those words, sometimes when they come out, and I know they came, they've come towards probably all of us, and then they come out of our own mouths, and it is that third cycle where you get, oh, this is where we dissolve it. Resolve. Complete. The energy of completion is huge. The energy of being able to live with what is. Because that's what is. So I feel like that's the whole thing we're all going towards. 
and it's a it's a different place to be. It's a different place to live from. And we've got lots of time to practice because we're on a slow beat right now. So we've got lots of time to practice being slowing down to be with what is. You know, and speaking of practicing, one thing that I think helps is that, especially like deep wounds or, or unresolved wounds, is to change your mindset. You know about that, about whatever that is. Um, especially after you received healing, if those, you know, the battle really is because our soul, should I mention, is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so those are emotional wounds that we have, but if we counteract those, those emotions and those, those thoughts, rather, with thoughts of, you know what, you know, because the word says to, to bless those that curse you, you know, bless your enemies. So, you know, I'm just going to bless that person. God, you bless them today. You, you know, you take care of what they need today. You, and when you fill your mind and your mouth, your words, you know, because the Bible also says that bitter waters and sweet waters shouldn't come out of the same river. They can't come out of the same day. Mm -hmm. And your, your belly has rivers of living water. So, so when you bless, you know, those that, that may not have done the nicest things to you, you're going to be blessed. And, you, and you're going to have peace, most of all. Because how many times have we thought about, um, held on to unforgiveness or held on to something, and that person has long gone, they're not even thinking about us, they're not even thinking about what happened anymore, they're, you know, they're totally fine. And we're sitting here in bondage, you know, bound in our mind and in our heart and in our spirit. I'm sorry, it's time to go. Okay. <laughs> anyway, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> but just release it and bless that person. Yeah, I'm trying to remember a, a quote that maybe somebody can help me with because it's, it's fairly a uh, popular quote. It's something about uh, a true mark of, of ignorance is being angry at someone mm -hmm. and taking poison yourself and expecting them to die. To die, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I have heard that, yes. It's just like that. Something like that. Exactly. Good. Well, Mass we do, Lord make me an instrument of thy peace. This is Christian and as much for Jesus Christ. This is such a beautiful. Thank you, Alicia. Oh, thank you. Thank you.